Um, I did want to kind of just shift gears and I had one sort of area of interest that um, sort of has been on my radar radar recently. And um, it's this idea because I've, I've always been sort of more of an endurance, you know, training kind of person. I'm certainly not an athlete, but I've always, you know, been a runner and I like to do more endurance yeah. training types of activities. Although since last summer, when I started to really get into the muscle uh, biology and had, you know, Stu on and uh, Brad Schoenfeld, yourself, I, you know, I'm, I'm a lot, I see, I see how important resistance training is. And I've really tried hard to yeah. incorporate a lot more of that into my routine. Um, however, often I do do aerobic, you know, training in the same session as resistance training. And so um, there was a recent study you contributed to, you were a co-author on, about the role yeah. of aerobic conditioning in muscle hypertrophy. And I think there's been, I mean, I've, I've just heard from, you know, the echo chamber that there's this prevailing belief that aerobic exercise might actually impede gains from resistance training. So I was wondering if you could clarify how aerobic exercise could actually even potentially promote muscle growth and maybe discuss yeah. some of the potential mechanisms behind this phenomenon that was identified in yeah. the study you were part of. Yeah, sure. And as a disclaimer, this is certainly not my uh, area of expertise, but my understanding at least is, you know, the classic work by Hicks and a, a while ago was suggesting that there may be an interference effect between performing both, particularly with strength gains and and since that work, you know, people were asking the question and, and it followed up with some of the molecular work in, in cells and animals suggesting AMP may inhibit mTOR and you activate AMPK. So AMPK with endurance exercise, it stops mTOR being activated with resistance. And I think whilst that may be the case in cells and rodents, the human work really hasn't, that's not, but it's not washed out in the, in, in the human work at all. It doesn't seem to be an interference effect, at least when it comes to muscle hypertrophy. And, and there's been some good work by some Scandinavian groups there, Tommy Lundberg being one of them. And we are mapped based on some molecular work as well. Um, and in fact, as you've suggested, it, it may actually have an opposite effect where you precondition or you perform aerobic exercise um, and that may enhance capillarization. So, you know, facilitating blood delivery to the, to the muscle cell. And then when you perform resist resistance exercise, the muscle is, is primed to receive more nutritional, you know, insulin and, 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 and amino acids to enhance the the response, the protein synthetic response to, the, to resistance exercise. So essentially it's potentially promoting greater nutrient delivery to the muscle so that I can build. Uh, and another factor is, is, is satellite cells. So satellite cells will, you know, donate their nuclear material, you know, the transcription factors and, um, to enhance the ability to, to grow. Um, so there's some evidence that satellite cells and it's growing now stronger evidence that satellite cells play a really important role in the remodeling of muscle and the contributions towards, um, hypertrophy with resistance training and, and, and the endurance and endurance exercise may not only enhance nutrient delivery, but also activate satellite cells where they can donate their, their nuclear material to, and to support the growth response to resistance training. So essentially, you know, I think that there is some evidence. It certainly doesn't seem to be even, you know, especially if you're not doing high levels, really high levels of exercise, it, it seems that the average everyday person, it's not going to do harm at all to do some aerobic exercise with resistance. Um, and if anything, you know, we know that, you know, VO2 max in, in and of itself and exercise capacity is, is very, is a predictor of mortality. And, and it's also important to, to, to maintain cardiovascular health and function. So I never really think it's a bad idea to, uh, to incorporate in endurance and resistance, but I will say and echo what other people have said is the majority of the research out there in terms of health is on endurance and there's not as much on resistance, but I, I, I do think that, you know, there's certainly a role for both. And I would like a little bit more resistance out there than endurance. Maybe that's just my biases, but I do think a combination of both of them really are beneficial and they may even be synergistic as you've just suggested. Do you think doing the aerobic exercise or training after the resistance training could also be similar? Cause you're also still, I mean, you're still increasing, you know, capillary and, and vasodilation and, yeah. you know, stuff. Yeah. You think so? Okay. So, I mean, I, I, obviously if you're like going out and running 10 miles, you're not going to be able to, like, you're going to be too tired, but yeah. I'm talking, like, I'm talking about a 10 or a 15 minute Tabata, which is typically like what I'll do when I'm, when I'm doing the resistance training as yeah. well. But these days I do, I do it, my, my Tabatas will be in the morning and then I'll do resistance training yeah. later on in the evening actually. So, um, but it's still like in the same, the same day. 
Yeah. But uh, I don't see much of a problem with that at all. I mean, at the end of the day, it's, 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 I mean, people like yourself, I was very active. It's, it's maybe a consideration, but I think the majority of people just need to get out there and, and, and do, do exercise in and of itself. And the, the, the slight, you know, small chance that there may be an interference effect between the two, which I don't think really does exist, is certainly outweighed by the benefits of engaging in, in the exercise in and of itself, you know. So I think that's that's just kind of a bit of a red herring thing with the interference effect. I think it's more likely that it has a beneficial effect than anything else, engaging in both resistance and endurance. And endurance is going to confer its independent effects sort of from central, you know, you do a lot of endurance exercise, the central adaptations, you know, there's, there's cardiovascular adaptations, and then the peripheral adap- adaptations also occur, and then they may feed into enhancing the 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 synthetic response or at least the hypertrophic response to resistance training and there is a meta-analysis out there by i think tommy lumberg suggesting that you know um like certainly at least with cycling it doesn't seem to have that much of an effect it you know it also kind of raises this uh opens the door of like when you look at protocols for these trials that are being done looking at muscle hypertrophy and fill in the blank, whatever they're looking at. Yeah. Um, in many cases, the control, quote unquote, control group will be like passive recovery, but the passive recovery is them on a you know stationary cycle doing some low yeah. wattage, but then you're going, wait a minute, yeah. maybe that's not so inert. Maybe that's actually <laughs> promoting more hypertrophy in, in a way, right? I mean, potentially. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. I think the other th- thing is, um, and you said it before about precision, and, and sometimes when I see the word hypertrophy, I like look into the devils in the details. When people say hypertrophy, it's like, did you use an MRI? Did you put a tape measure around the leg? Did you use DEXA? Did you do immunohistochemistry to look at type 1, type 2 fibers, which are very variable? So I think a lot of the times, you know, like I said, the devils in the details in the paper just beyond the abstract is, how did you measure hypertrophy? And I think that's also a key question because, you know, you I wouldn't just hang my hat on 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 cross-sectional area of individual fibers alone. I would like to see, you know, maybe some MRI data and complement it with some other actual measures of hypertrophy. So, yeah, I think uh, I think reading the papers in a little bit more detail can can reveal more. <laughs>